expertise. And you do have some. You can't live with God without accumulating some things that we know. Uh, leading our discussion this afternoon is Brother uh, Zach Wake. Brother Zach has demonstrated not only a keen interest in the things of God, but a kingdom competence in these areas. And though he is a young of years, he is not young in spirit. His inner man is a, is a great refreshment to those of us that know him. So I introduce Brother William Zach Wake to you and commend him unto you as one that has demonstrated before men and before angels his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, the living factors that we find ourselves in shall be ceased. That means the time that we've been separated from one another, uh, that we've seen it, uh, your faces no more for a while. But we look forward to the day that this shall cease, and the uh, never famous day shall open. And uh, what we're discussing here as far as subject matter, that we will know the reality there. I think that uh, Brother John Well said it best last year. Uh, of course, he's gone on to receive his reward, and we glory with him. Um, in the process of cultivating some thoughts that uh, Brother Given gave me a very difficult assignment, uh, not difficult from the standpoint of, of God's perspective, but oftentimes difficult from our perspective. Uh, I will not uh, attempt to be someone that I'm not with you this evening, this afternoon. But some thoughts, what we want to do here is, is to create some thought. God wants us to, for our minds to be stimulated that we may spur one another on to love and good works. Now the reason, the rationale behind why we want to do that is because we've seen Christ as he is in his fullness uh, through the eye of faith and that we've placed our trust, our lives in him. Remember Jesus there in John 6, uh, the question was posed and Jesus answered it. He said, now this is the work of God. The entire work of God is that we believe on his son. Yeah. And if that's the entire work of God, then all that we have to do is remove ourselves and then God is seen through us because his beloved son rests in us. That was an arresting thought. That was an illuminating thought when I came to this. Now, uh, and, and I, I keep a fairly lengthy phone bill these days because people that think like this are far and few between and I do. I have a healthy phone bill, uh, at least $100 a month. But perhaps that's light to you, but to my bill phone, that's a lot of money. But it's worth that to me because it, it takes some seeking and digging to find people that are confident, not in themselves, but in what God and Christ has done for us. And this is what we're looking forward to. Amen. We're not looking to promote ourselves, but we're looking to promote that for which God and Christ has bestowed upon us. Now the subject, and I have to check this just to make sure I misplaced. Well, my wife and I and our family, we just uh, have uprooted ourselves in the last two weeks. We've moved 150 miles uh, south, and uh, I lost a lot of things, some things I don't remember receiving. So, uh, Brother Leon, last year you said you were in Leon land, so I guess I was in the Zaki zone or something. So uh, please uh, bear with me. The subject that we want for all of y'all to involve yourselves in is what it means to know God. First and foremost, let me say this. That nothing, nothing in the kingdom of God is casual. So let's not take a casual approach to what God's done. Nothing. Let me give you an illustration of that very point. When John came on the scene preaching of the the, set of the Messiah to come. It wasn't in a casual manner, was it? He was out in the wilderness preaching repentance. Pharisees heard word and they came down to see what was going on. And he says, who warned you of them of coming doom? Bear also for the repentance. Nothing casual about the kingdom of God. When Jesus came on the scene preaching, when he was, well, even after, even before that, when he was uh, taken up into the the wilderness, when the Spirit of God drove him out 
into the wilderness, and he was tempted in all fashions, even as we are tempted by the devil. Nothing casual at all about that. And when the kingdom of God was manifest on this world, when Jesus says you go, and when you are endued with power on high, and what happened? The whole world was turned upside down. Nothing casual in the kingdom of God. <laughs> there in Bethany, Jesus said one thing of one woman that he said of no one else and at no other time. An alabaster jar full of pure nard worth a year's sound. That last gets those long way. And when she came and broke it, Scripture says, and poured it over him, and the disciples were muttering amongst themselves and said, Boy, what a waste. And Jesus said, Leave her alone, for she has done a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. See, you didn't even see what she was doing. She realizes who I am. She realizes that she's preparing my body for, for its birth. Mm -hmm. Nothing casual in the kingdom of God. And so that means to me that when we come together in forms like this, and when I invite you in a little while to offer some of your thoughts, what it means uh, to know God or to walk with God, I want you to share it with simplicity and from your heart, because we don't want to just know something that you're not. God knows that anyway. But that woman, Jesus said, he says, wheresoever the gospel is preached, her story shall accompany it. And it's going to come true here today, too. I, I'm a kind of fellow that likes to ask a lot of questions. You see, I'm not a real uh, studious individual as far as sitting down with a, with a, a textbook or something. But I, I'm a kind of an individual that has enough sense that if you give me a second or two, I can figure something out. Had opportunities several times to pick people's brains, people that, that carry uh, all sorts of, of degrees along with them. And a lot of good things I've picked up from some of these people, but I've also picked up a lot of knowledge and insight and wisdom from people that, that don't have those letters either. And I asked a man one time, a very distinguished man, a man that's known all around the world, and uh, this is just a common practice, I asked him, I said, uh, what was the last arresting thought that you have ever had? Concerning the kingdom of God, concerning the scripture, concerning what Christ has done for you. And we were sitting there eating uh, uh, ice cream sodas. You know what he said? Well, I can't think of what my last arresting thought that I had about the kingdom of God. Well, I looked at him and I said, brother, I'm quite concerned for you. I said, because you know what you just said? He says, no, I don't know what I just said. I said, you said that you're dead. You haven't had a, 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 a new, a fresh thought about the kingdom of God. How in the world do you expect to know God if you don't cultivate a relationship with him? And you see, this is what we've been called to do. And I am about the sect, of a stringent sect, that you can't know this, you can't do this, and boy, let me tell you, when you come out of it, it is so rewarding in the blessing that God gives you and the grace that he manifests to you and the clearness of the scriptures is just awesome. Jesus, uh, I, I preached a, a message one day, as a matter of fact, I brought it from somewhere, that I stood up and I said these words, and given what you said a while ago is true, concerning, you say these words, You'll be fired for it, and I'm a testimony of this very day. I got up and I was preaching out of 1 John where it says that when we have an unction, a holy unction, whereby we have all knowledge. And I was so assuming, my age, I'm so impressionable, some other things, that I said that I am, I walk with God. God says it. I believe it. You know, that's good enough. God says that even if we walk, we walk as Christ, and we walk in the light. So I says that uh, I'm happy to tell you that I am in fellowship with God. Amen. I'm happy to tell you that God has anointed me with his Holy Spirit, given me all knowledge that pertains to life and godliness. And why in the world would anybody, <coughs> would anybody want to take a man to task over that subject? It, it befuddles 
of my mind, and I'll tell you why, because the opposite of knowledge is ignorance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And one thing, brethren, you don't want anyone ever saying about you is that you're ignorant. Because ignorance is not blissful. When God has stood on the throne of glory and echoed down the corridor of time and said, Here am I. How many times? At least two dozen. While the Israelites were in the, in the desert, did he cry to them? That, that, and lamented that, he, that they didn't know he was God. And here we are on the other side of the flood. Christ is at the right hand of God interceding for us. He's our great advocate. And if he didn't walk with God and no one walked with God, how much more shall we not walk with God? How much more intimate can you get than the Father and a Son? How much more intimate can we be than, than having total and complete access to God the Father, Amen. whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You don't say that. I'm not a linguist, Brother David. I'm not a linguist, and I don't, I don't ever plan to be, perhaps in the future. But I know that is a term of intimacy. And you don't cry intimacy unless you know someone. And God desires for us to know. <coughs> so, I guess one other reason why I'm giving, and this just occurred to me, that the reason you asked me to leave this is because at one time, I didn't know God. That's true. At one time, you see, I was alienated from him, even as you were. But you know what? We don't have to cross those waters ever again. It's time for us to proceed to the plains of glory. It's time for us, and, and I think, you know, you say, well, he's a young man, he's impressed with so what? Well. Uh, I think it's time for us to forget that which we've had impacted upon us and let us dwell in this fruit of the Spirit of God. You know, and like I said, it is a very rewarding, very uh, free aspect in my walk with God to know that He loved me enough to give me His Son that I may know Him and not know about Him. Even the, even the demons know about Him but to know him in an intimate fashion and to walk with him. And although my thoughts are not completely sanctified yet, this is one of the most frustrating things that I've found in my Christian walk, Amen. is that as my, the, the, the warring in my mind is so frustrated and so inhibiting, and this is why then we want to invite you just a little bit to try to spur us on that that thinking isn't like that anymore. I don't like, Paul says, I don't like it. I don't want it there. I don't want to think like that, but it happens. It happens all the time, and that's by flesh. The greatest, the greatest weapon we have in our arsenal against the wiles of the devil, according to Ephesians chapter 6, is and above all, taking the shield of faith. For if we believe about doubt, I mean, Christ has accomplished it all. It's just a matter for him to provide and appropriate his, his grace to us that we can do it. Why would God create us to leave us alone? No, never alone. No, never alone. So what we want to do is to invite you to come. And are you, do you want to see these hands to give them? Is that fine? You want them on the floor. And please, keep that in mind. What it means to walk or, or to know God. We're not interested in, in wanting to know what you came out of. God's, God's nailed that to the cross. We don't want any, let's not get any sob stories. God's nailed that to the cross. He's taken it out. Isn't that right? Yes. He's purged our conscience with the blood of Jesus Christ. That we have uh, now robed ourselves with Christ. And what we want to do here is we want to spur one another on because we've seen that. Mm -hmm. 
and we want to invite you. Don't be intimidated. Don't worry about uh, speaking correctly or not. But if you have a thought to share on what it means to know God, we'll uh, continue this uh, discussion. And I, while I bring you, you want both of these down, I assume. Is that correct? Since the theme of our renewal is knowing God, and these fine speakers are going to be dealing with that, most of they deal with will be on what we call the vertical plane, our knowing God. But I appreciated our young brother a while ago when he referred to Malachi's statement that they feared the Lord, spake often one with another, and the Lord hearkened, and the Lord heard. And I'd like for us to realize that there has to be a sort of a spillover an overflow on us on the horizontal level. We've got to learn to have greater fellowship and greater communication. And you know, uh, I think of uh, what uh, John wrote in 1 John 1 when he referred to that which was from the beginning. He said, Our ears have heard and our eyes have seen, and our hands have handled. These senses, tactile and auditory and optical, <coughs> And he said, now we heard, we saw, we, that we, we handled it of the word of life. And he said, that which we have seen and we have heard, we declare unto you mm -hmm. that you may have fellowship with us. Mm -hmm. Now there's the heart of mm -hmm. For truly, he said, our fellowship is with the Father. Here's the word. And then he comes on down and said that he that loveth God will what his brother also said. Mm -hmm. Turned not around and said that we love the Father. He said that we love his Son. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Did you speak your name? Yourself to I'm Jim Robinson from Milton, Florida. And uh, in my knowledge and struggle, uh, I'm not a preacher. I recognize I'm amongst a lot of them here. Uh, the folks out there are the ones that need to know God. And obviously, <laughs> we need to know what we're trying to preach. But for the last 2,000 years, we've been turning our heads, looking way the other way about the sin in the churches and about the sin in our communities. And the devil's taken us over. And uh, I can't read in the scriptures that the men that knew God, the prophets, did that. They went to the people and they told the people they were sinning. And they identified this God that they were talking about. Uh, we're not doing that. Great sermons in our pulpits and all these buildings. But nobody out there knows anything about God. We're not speaking about God in our community turning our hips and let their sin come clear up and wash into our doorways and we turn away from it and pretend it's not there because we want peace. We want this thing we call peace. I don't think that's knowing God.
that. And Brother Barney, I appreciate you bringing that out to us. God doesn't want us to doubt. He wants us to be assured. And that's what uh, the Brother Irvin had brought out there just a minute ago. That, that we have an assurance of what he's done. If we have not, then we labor in vain. And we believe in vain. Any other thought? I would like to say that I know everyone in here is familiar that with what Christ said, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. yes. Then he said, I am the truth. That's right. mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if we haven't in the past and still are making a mistake in our teaching. <coughs> Brother Irvin, and, uh, I, forgive me, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Dallas. <laughs> My name is Marvin Wilson, but I am Mr. Potter. I don't know if that's where I've been introduced to all this. Uh, I wonder if in our teaching we haven't neglected bringing out God's personality as we should. We can't know anyone without really knowing what their feelings are and what they want. It's an impossibility. I, for five, six, maybe seven years, taught God is love. That's beautiful. It's true. He is. I'm very thankful for it. And I have began to learn, not too many years ago, that that's not all God is. Mm -hmm. That I was limiting God to that one person I I started studying the wrath of God. It kind of scared me. I started studying the judge, the judgment that we will face. We have been, and I say we, uh, I think perhaps the institutional church as a whole for the last 30 some odd years, taught easyism from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Too much easyism. Uh, excuse the expression, we've taught it to the point to where some of the young people through misunderstanding have thought they could go out and raise hell on Saturday
sign it and over your son. Thank you. Amen. I'll draw to your remembrance of Paulus. was a man that was mighty in the scriptures, but until he was first taught more perfectly the way of God, uh, his productivity, if you will, was somewhat inhibited. And thank you for that admonition, and that is exactly true. Brother Fred, I believe you said you wanted a word or two here. synonymous with eternal life. Amen. Jesus said, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. So 
So those two things go together. And uh, another, from looking at it from another perspective, now John, uh, he said, hereby do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. See, now this is not a legalistic type of keeping of commandments where they're like grievous to you. See, this is, this is talking about your heart's actually affected with God's word and his purpose. See, and his, his laws written on your heart. See, that's a, that's a hallmark of the new covenant. You know, so I will write my laws in your inward parts and put them in your heart. See, and so when you, when you find yourself affected that way with God's commandments, <coughs> You know that you know him. See, that's your that's your evidence. See, another way uh, we know that we know him is uh, we are acquainted with uh, with what God is doing, His eternal purpose, which He's purposed in Christ Jesus. Uh, God is working salvation in the midst of the earth. That's that's primarily what God is doing in the in the present age. See now, and now all these all the judgments that we read about in the Book of Revelation and all these. Uh, the, the voices and the, the lightnings and the thunderings, you know, we see them going on all about us. Well, this is part of God's working, too. But when you can see yourself comfortably uh, related to this purpose that he's working out in the earth, this, e this eternal purpose, which he's working out in Christ Jesus, you know that you know him. See, if you, if you can see yourself in concert with that purpose, see, his purpose is to save you from the course of this world. Now, if that is being realized in you, then you know that you know him. Amen.
Mike Blake was from Brownsburg, Indiana. And uh, first, I'd like to take just a brief little side avenue uh, slightly off the subject, but not much, to exhort everyone to realize what what we have here with us believers gathered together here. This is no small thing. Amen. And, and uh, I think this is. This is one of the things that we'll remember. This is one of the highlights of our life in Christ here on earth. And uh, this is this to be taken seriously to me. I, I really yeah. enjoy this. And uh, more on the on the subject, Brother Given uh, mentioned about knowing the scriptures and the point of knowing the scriptures to know God. And uh, Brother Waters mentioned about the the horizontal plane and the vertical plane between us and God. When you get to the top of that peak, the vertical plane, knowing God, and you get to the top of that, you can start going horizontal again. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, to know God is to know what God knows. To know God is to love what he loves and to hate what he hates. Mm -hmm. And as the song says, this is my father's world, so why, why would we be able to understand that we can not only know the times, but discern them. All these these issues that surround us, global warming and earthquakes, tornadoes, and fires, and save the whales, and so on and so on, we, we can discern that. It's not really all that difficult. And uh, this another song says, uh, set your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, Things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Mm -hmm. And the world won't understand that when you tell them that you know God, especially if you're young. They'll say that there's just no way. You'll they'll probably know people that have had as many years of education as you've been on the earth, and they they will insist that you can't know God, but but you'll know in your heart that you do because you love the brother because you love the Lord. And one last uh, challenging question I'd like to leave you with is that uh, we know that the human mind is a very, very large capacity. Uh, we, we don't know exactly how much we can know or memorize or attain. We do know that in this carnal state in which we live, we can't know every single thing that God knows. He's much mightier and higher spirit than we are. But I would urge you to to press your limits to see how much you can know. How much can your your human mind, how much can you know about God in your hearts? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So Mike, that uh, transcendent nature of knowledge. And uh, not only is it transcendent, but as he demonstrated, it's Build, build upon that. And I really appreciate it, brother, the uh, admonition there to, to, to be restrained. Paul said that. That's just what Paul told the Philippians in Philippians 3. He says, not that I've obtained all of this, but that's what I want. And if, if it's all up to me, I'll have it. And the only thing that inhibits us is of the flesh of nature, which is to be mortified, to be crucified. What Paul said, I died daily. Any other thoughts? This is good. Mr. Jill? My name is Jill Maddock. Because we know with God, we have become a people. Those who do not know God are a non entity to God. They are not recognized by God, and they will not be eternally in existence with God. But I thank God that I have become a people and that I have a purpose. Those in the world ask, why am I here? I have an answer for them. There is a reason for you to be here if you are in Christ. If you are following after God, you have a definite reason. And that is the only reason for you to exist. And I'd just like to thank God that we have been catapulted into reality because we know him. Amen. 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 An eye experience there. Sister Jill had it. Yes, that is true. I like that term, catapulted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a game, you see. This is this is the real thing, Sister Joe. I appreciate that. For at one time we had no hope in the world, but now you see it was a it was a traumatic event when when God's son died, 
And I hope that they look are deceiving sometimes, but the majority of you looks like that you have come through the trauma of dying to yourself very well. And just continue to keep it that way because in Christ there's purpose. Outside of Christ, uh, well, you have a destiny too, but there's, there's no eternal purpose. That give up. Any other thoughts, comments? Brother Bean? Christ. We see things that the prophets like. 
They wanted to see. I mean, they wanted. They wanted to know what person and what manner of times they were speaking of. And the Lord told them, "This is not. It's not for you. It, it's for those that are going to come later." Of course, they, they come into a full awareness of it now. I can understand in the glory. But uh, this is this is a marvelous thing that that God that God has been brought within the range of our understanding in Jesus Christ. He was God manifest in the flesh, made, made known to us. And, and now when you see him, uh, see, this is a disconcerting experience to the flesh. To come into the presence of God is disconcerting uh, and upsetting to the flesh. But when you know God, it's not disconcerting to, to be in the presence of God. Now by that, uh, by that I mean that you are keenly aware of his of his will, of his loves, and his hates in, in relation to you. Uh, you are you are acutely aware of, of his position on you. And to, to rejoice when you know that, and be exceeding glad, that is a product of, of knowing the Lord. So uh, I, I glory that. I'm glad in the day of his power. Amen. 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 Any other? <coughs> no one else wants to express themselves.